Hello everybody, good afternoon. This is Psychic Medium Jane Hamilton Parker. Now a lot of you have asked me, do animals meet us from the other side? One lady sent me a message saying she knows she's going to lose her dog and she's very upset of course. I want to know if my beloved dog will wait for me when it's her time to go. Well, animals do go over the rainbow bridge as one would say, actually, Animals do come and greet us. I've known people to feel the dog past their legs once they've passed over the other side. I can give an example. I had a beautiful dog called William, who was half Jack Russell and Dash Hound. He had one blue eye, one brown eye, and he looked like a tiger. But I had him for 19 years and <clears throat> I had to get up about three or four times in the night to let him out in the garden, otherwise he'd fall in the pond. And I can remember saying to him, William, I know you're getting a bit breathless and everything, but give me a sign if you feel it's your time to go. Well, he licked my hand and I still was holding on because you still have attachment to animals, don't we? And <clears throat> the next day's breathing was coming very shallow, so I took him to the vets and I'm so pleased to say that he didn't have to be put down or have an injection and he actually died as I laid him on the vet's table and I could feel his energy gradually leaving him and going through the top of his head. I just felt tremendous peace and love as he went and I think that's the kindest thing you can do if you've got an animal to be there with them when it's their time to pass. One can't always be there, of course, but if you can try and be there. Anyway, like one is, I was very upset losing him. And my husband and I, we couldn't eat or anything. Well, I couldn't because I missed him so much. And I remember one night um, getting up, I suppose about half past three in the morning, wanting to go to the toilet and coming back quite dreary just going to climb in my bed and I happened to look down on the floor by the side of the bed and I saw William and he looked much younger like a puppy and I said Craig Craig William's here William's here first thing Craig said that bloody dog <laughs> because he used to sleep by the side of the bed on the floor or I used to take him to church I even took him um even took him when we stayed in London hotels that would accept dogs and it was so wonderful to see him and he looked so lovely. And there's times when I've been given readings in my spiritual room when I actually can feel him going past me. And I've had many, many clients that have come that have lost animals, cats, dogs, parrots, all kinds of animals. And I love one to bring that animal through. I can remember a man travelled all the way from Scotland um, to connect with his dog who was a Great Dane. And a relative brought this dog through and said that the dog had passed, had had a heart attack and he was beside himself. And they said, I said, does the name Bertie mean anything? Yes, that was his name, he said. I said, well, the dog's been received in spirit realm and the dog is waiting there for you when it's your time. He's not asking you to come over now, but waiting for you. And you still got his collar and all his drinking bowls. He said, yes, I have. He said, that's all I needed to know that he arrived and he's waiting for me because he was like my best friend and the only animal that I connected with in my life. That's all I had. And it was wonderful. And suddenly as we were talking, suddenly he said, I've just felt a lick on my hand, he said. And I'm not, I, I know I'm not hallucinating, or it's my imagination. So that dog come back to reward him with a loving lick, a kiss. Now animals do go over to the spirit realm. And you know, even if you've had animals as a child or years ago, when you actually do um, transcend over to the spirit realm, you will actually see those animals coming towards you. I hate going on Facebook and seeing animals that have been abandoned tied to a tree and dying with salvation, uh, starvation rather. And I remember seeing one and its roots were poking through and it was screaming in pain. And I thought, you know, how could anybody treat animals like that? If I could get older, that person. And it was so frightened because somebody was trying to untie this dog. It was 
screaming, it was frightened. It must have been hallucinating, I should think. And thank God we have got the RSPCA and we've got all these organisations that do save abandoned dogs and cats and all kinds of animals because all creatures are important while we're here. Now, <clears throat> you know, it's a living thing, an animal that breathes, a living thing. And you might have some old lady that's got a dog and it's somebody she can talk to because it's a living being, somebody that's welcoming you unconditionally with love and that's there for you. Even every animal responds with love, even cows, horses, they can pick up the vibration from that human because their senses are heightened and everything. And it's like um, an animal or a dog, they will know who's nice people, they will sense it. Even dogs have been used for sniffing out cancers, all kinds of illnesses, because once again, the sense of smell is heightened. Even Labradors that are trained um, for the partially deaf and, and uh, blind to help them do um, tasks like taking washing into a washing machine and helping them or taking it out or even answering the door and bringing letters and different things to them. So animals are quite remarkable, really. Now, <clears throat> in my answer to this lady um, that asked me especially, I'd be absolutely heartbroken if I couldn't see my dog again. And I know my dog's not going to last much longer. Because, you know, you look at some animals, especially when they get older dogs, they go all grey under the chin. Well, even the animals have got to grow old and get old. And it's remarkable how long they can stay here. Um, I think they used to say for every year of a dog, it was equivalent to seven years of a human. I don't know how they work that out, but they, hey ho, who am I to say? But <clears throat> reply to this lovely lady that asked me about her dog. Yes, your dog will know when it's time to go. Um, rabbits know, animals know, cats, they usually go in a, in a corner. Um, I, we had seven rabbits and we had a wonderful rabbit. Um, who who knew it's time to go, he would go into a corner and they just want peace and quiet. They know, animals do know. There's many a time I found a, a rabbit um, and somebody's, for example, didn't want it and I've rescued it and I've picked up one rabbit. It had maggots coming out and I put this rabbit in my arms and I got some tweezers and I took one maggot out as much as I could. Did you know this rabbit just laid back like in bliss, knew I was helping him. And then I just cleaned his wounds and nursed it back to life. And that because sometimes you have these flies, blue flies that lay all different diseases and forms maggots and everything. So animals do pick up and they know who's trying to help them. But the lady's dog, when it's time to go, will connect with her, I'm absolutely sure, because sometimes, you know, you're dreaming, you can see an animal or anything. Um, you know, animals, even as I say, the animals have got to die and go on to the higher life. But <clears throat> animals know when it's their time to go. Animals have a sense. I mean, I often think all these cows that are taken off to the slaughterhouse, you know, must have a tear, must know. And you hear of cows escaping from trailers and different things. I am pleased about that, really pleased about that. And, <clears throat> you know, we've got two rooks that come into the garden every day and I do feed them. Uh, and I take it once he's wife, as I call him, and they, they watch us. And they're very knowing. If I don't put food out at a certain time, they're actually knocking on the conservatory window to be fed. Um, I haven't been left gifts by them, but um, it's wonderful to see nature and that. But um, dogs, cats, rabbits, birds, mice, rats, they all go there and things. But dogs are very important because dogs come part of who we are and part how we give them love. Uh, a dog is a very good companion, a very good friend, because some people are very lonely and that's all they've got in the world. Or you have a dog, you might have a sheep dog, um, that comes part of a, the family. Or you might have a, an only child that's got a dog and it comes like a brother or a sister to it, which I can understand. But once an animal descends over in the spirit realm, 
Who comes for that animal? Is it another dog or that? No, it's usually a relative and a relative will come back from the spirit world to give that person left behind proof and what that dog's doing. Because some people, you know, they might bury a dog in the garden, wrap a dog in a blanket, put his favourite toy or ball there. And when a relative comes through and say, oh, I've got your dog, Jack, and he's playing with his red ball that you put in the blanket with him. How comforting is that? How lovely is that to know that that animal's gone over to the other side? Now, lots of people um, say, why is it that it seems to be black dogs that come back to haunt people. I really don't know that answer. I just thought it's just going back to the olden days, everything black like a, <clears throat> uh, a black raven or a black dog or a black cat is meant to be all oh, supernatural and very bad. Not necessary so, because they can be the sweetest animals out. Um, you know, everything responds with love, doesn't it? A dog will respond with love, a cat respond with love, a bird respond with love. It's nurturing and giving your time to something you love. So they give their time back to us freely. But I can reassure you that animals do go to the animal kingdom in the spirit world. And we do have loved ones that come and collect them for us. How comforting is that? That's beautiful, isn't it? Um, my grandmother used to always have dogs. We never had uh, no dogs in the family and they were quite good characters and I can remember as a little girl we had a rather scruffy looking dog called Prince who's a mongrel and he used to follow us children everywhere and um, you know the dustmen in those days used to come up the garden path and um, collect the dustbins they used to carry them over their shoulders and they used to have all these leather hood things on different than the dust carts nowadays it's all done automatically and he wouldn't let the dustman, he didn't like dustman and he didn't like motorbikes for some reason. And I, I would think probably he'd been kicked or something or perhaps he chased something or a noise or something and got kicked. And I can remember coming home from school and my grandmother said, you can't go in the bathroom, darling, because Princeton's in there and he's had a brainstorm. I didn't really know what a brainstorm meant. What she meant, and I, I learnt later on, that he was kicked by a motorbike, somebody on a motorbike, and he started having convulsions. So they picked him up and obviously he had to be put down by the vet. And um, she knew I was very attached to this dog and she wouldn't let me go in the bathroom. And anyway, it was many, many years as I, I grew up, I actually had a dream and I actually saw Prince and he looked quite young. And that one just waggling in his town. I thought, how lovely, how wonderful that that dog's shown himself. For, it was only like a few split seconds in a dream and and I know that animals do survive death I know they go to a better place and you know even these animals that have been ill-treated or cruelly or these animals on these breeding farms they go to a better place thank God that they do but <clears throat> I can reassure you that animals do go to the spirit world and they are received with love they were loved here and they are received with love on the other side. If you feel that you don't see your animal again or you don't feel that animal connects with you, just give it time. Just give it time. Because as I say, all animals are important. All animals on God's earth have a purpose. But dogs, I know for a fact, they come part of us and they give us unconditional love and they're very protective over us. Now, an animal will know if it's not a very nice person because you might see, I had another dog, <clears throat> a beautiful old English shepherd dog, and I, because we live by woods. And I can remember walking, walking him, Luke, because his name, my son called him Lukey because he's known after Luke Skywalker and <clears throat> And I could, in Star Wars, and I can remember walking along, and he's such a friendly dog, and suddenly a man came from nowhere, and he suddenly looked at him and started showing his teeth and growling, and that, and I thought it was unusual at 12 o'clock that day, a man that suddenly came from behind the bushes, and that, I believe that dog was very protective and saved me, who would have known what would have happened, and he quickly turned around, retreated, went the other way, not because the dog was showing his teeth, because this dog knew, could see his aura, because animals can see auras and animals do pick up 
who's good people and who's not. But I want to say to the lady that um, wrote to me on YouTube, I can reassure you, your dog will wait for you, my dear, and you will see that lovely dog again. So don't worry, don't be sad. Even the animals, it's their time to go. And sometimes the animals, they know themselves it's time to go. And as sad as it is, you will be reunited, reunited with your dog again. So that's all I'm going to say today. And I want to say take care, love from the heart, and God bless you all. And enjoy your animals, enjoy your dogs while you're here. Ciao.